Well, hey everybody, welcome back. Let's get working on the intake manifold on this car, shall we? Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode at the Red Barn. And today, you might be asking yourself, why has it been so long since you posted anything? Well, you know, last time you met the LS car and I did a couple of things with that. But what's been going on is the Red Barn has been completely cleaned out and tidied up and gotten rid of crap. And now, how is this for cool? I got the Ferrari 914 and the LS car both in the shop it feels like the shop has doubled in size and now the fixture table has been moved over here kind of into a fabrication area got a few more things to clean up but got rid of a couple of the unused tools and threw out a bunch of junk and my goodness it just feels like we have nothing but space so here we go let's get back to the uh to the 914 ferrari and as a special treat i've got my buddy martin here who is a master fabricator and I am not the greatest with aluminum. I haven't done a lot of aluminum work yet. And so today, what we are doing is Martin is going to help me. I help, help translates to do the work while I watch and film. And he is going to, we fixtured up the Ferrari manifold and sliced off the receiver, I'll call it the receiver rings for the throttle bodies. And now we've got this three and an eighth inch aluminum tube, 065 wall, and we are gonna make drops, if you will, to get the throttle bodies to head downhill to get underneath the rear deck lid of the 914. So that is uh, what we're gonna start working on today. So I'm gonna set you guys up on time-lapse and we'll get to watch the master at work. Here we go. Now I'm gonna let this time-lapse run to capture the entire process we went through to get these two turndowns fitted, just to give you an idea of how long it takes when you're making some of this custom stuff. Uh, not that most of you don't know that, and I'm not certainly saying we're the world's fastest fabricators, we're certainly not, but it does give you a glimpse into just how long some of this stuff can take. But they turned out pretty good as you're about to see. Okay, the turndowns are now tacked on and I just fitted them into the car to get an idea. And uh, trying to play with fitment of some of the body panels. Now these are obviously, you know, the throttle bodies are not gonna go here. They're gonna go, sort of depends. And I'm checking with my Ferrari expertise buddies about recommendations for how much extra, you know, sort of how much extra length I might add uh, to, the, to the plenum chamber and where the throttle bodies go uh, to not screw up how the thing runs. Anyway, so what is this doing on here? This is just approximating the hood line. And then to get an idea, just to start kicking ideas around for potential, how it might look, this is one idea. And I'm just going to set that on there for right now. But this is kind of getting you an idea of how this might start to look with the, you know, with the deck lid trunk lid here obviously these will be tied together etc but um it's kind of cool looking right so debating and again you can see why it matters where the throttle body goes because if the throttle body has to start say right here then having these exposed would not look nearly as good and that would force some kind of cover and the cover has to be much bigger because the engine movement but uh this is starting to look pretty cool and just as an example, this was a scoop, an aluminum scoop that I made in a metal shaping class that I took. And, you know, it's, it's you know, does it end up with something, you know, like this? Now that was just a random width. You know, this was just a practice piece to learn on. And you can see it's like, well, that looks dorky. It's not centered. And if you center it, it's gotta be bigger. 
you know, or it's got to stick up more. And so there's all kinds of fun stuff to play with. Like, you know, do we do, you know, one bump that goes up all the way across and down, you know, so it's not two separate humps. So a lot of the style points stuff of this, it's going to be super critical, but, uh, you know, it's coming along nicely. And I think the real big news today though is the red barn is so spacious. I got two cars in here for the first time ever. And it's not just having two cars in here. So I got two cars in here and I can still work on both of them at the same time. It's epically cool. And uh, it's fun to be back to work on the, the Ferrari 914. And it's always fun to work with Martin on projects like this. He's, uh, he's got a ton of great input and uh, the skills are off the chart. And uh, we get along, we get along great. And that's always, that's always the best part of this is the social aspect. All right, it's a bit later on, uh, next couple days, and you can see here, turndowns have been cut to length and fully welded in both locations. Here, you And now you can see what we're doing here. If I get down at the side of the car, you can see that probably we're going to end up needing to see, well, needing, you're going to end up seeing a little bit of this if you were to just have the, the plain deck lid showing, or just a plain deck lid. So it's either going to end up with some kind of you know hump cover to to try to hide those things but we'll see that's all all about the you know the the style points of the of the uh, trunk and we're not we're not there yet right now it's just you know continuing to chip away at this overall design and then the next thing i'm going to work on is an air cleaner setup so there's a couple of different options that i have to work my way through one is which ECU we're gonna use. I've been leaning towards an aftermarket ECU because I've been struggling with whether or not you can even crack the code on the on the Ferrari stuff to understand if you know there's an immobilizer, there is an immobilizer, but is there other weird stuff in there that's you know like if the door ajar lights on the car won't start and I can't figure out the circuitry for that because there's not a lot of published information about the factory ECUs for these things. So option number one is an aftermarket ECU and if that's the case virtually all the aftermarket ECUs use a uh, manifold absolute pressure sensor, a MAP sensor, to determine uh, what's going on with air inside the plenum in terms of you know the fueling settings. But what the factory uses and the factory ECU, this is true of most, well most, uh, a number of uh, factory setups is they use a mass airflow sensor. And this is just a different way of seeing how much air is getting into the engine. Good news, bad news. The good news is aftermarket ECU, we can probably, uh, well, we can make the engine run. But it turns out there's an outside chance that I have uh, located someone who can, who has cracked the code on the factory ECUs and can get in and do the program to make programming necessary so that it will run standalone outside the 360 chassis with the factory ECUs, which means I would need to run the MAF sensors. And uh, like I said, good news, bad news. This was discovered after these were set. And you can see if I run the factory stuff, well, this is now in the way. So I'm waiting to hear back from the company but assuming that we can use the factory ECUs, that's probably the best shot of making the engine work uh, optimally. Because there's a whole bunch of stuff going on with this intake setup that the factory ECU does a wonderful job with. And not that big a deal, this would have to be cut and these tilted up or down to get the, the MAF sensors you know, to live in here uh, and clear everything while the engine's bouncing around like it's going to do. So. For now, this is where we're going to leave things until we hear. Um, I'm still thinking that regardless, I'm going to have to have some kind of intake into an airbox system here, which will then need to have probably end up with venting in the rear panel, same as on my LS car, uh, for the air intake. You know, the fun of these custom builds is, you know, one step forward, two steps back. So we'll see. And that's, like I said, that's the fun of these kinds of things. But there you go. Um, here's where we are in the build. Uh, we're still focusing, obviously still focusing on working out this intake setup, but I'm going to get back to things like uh, completing the exhaust system. i got to start working on the plumbing setup, determining how I'm going to deal with the water pump, 
I've got to get the alternator relocated to the other side of the motor because the shift cables uh, start on this side and in order to get them into the cabin, you know, without having them run all the way underneath the engine and hang down and be a, a hang up risk. Uh, I got to go right where the alternator is to get them routed inside uh, to the shift console. So it's always something and we'll just keep chipping away at it. But there you go. And as always, thanks for watching. If you have questions or comments, please leave them down below and we'll catch up with you real soon. Y'all take care now. Bye-bye.